this is Shannon. Welcome back to my channel where you will find all things art. Today I'm doing a blue and gold macaw over an out of focus background on a 12 inch round canvas. I will link I will link the video below on how to do this out of focus background with an airbrush, but you can do this over whatever background you want. Just make sure the background's completely dry before moving on to the bird and you shouldn't have any problems. I transferred this image onto the canvas with a projector and white chalk pencil. I will link a video in the description showing you how to transfer an image onto canvas. In this video, I also show you how to use tracing and transfer paper if you don't have a projector. I'm going to fill in the image with white using a filbert brush. I'm just going to start with a smaller one and then upgrade to a bigger one just to fill in more space. Then once the paint is completely dry, I'm going to move use the projector to redraw the details on the bird with a brown charcoal pencil. Once I have the details back on the bird, I'm going to start with the beak uh, with a filbert brush and I'm going to use a combination of Payne's gray, black, and white to create the varying values of the beak. I'm using a fine mist sprayer to keep the paint wet and a mop brush to blend those colors together a bit and give it like smoother uh, brush strokes. I'm going to go ahead and fill in some of the darkest areas of the bird, uh, mostly because I already have that dark on my palette. Um, I'm going to use, I'm going to switch over to a one liner brush to use for this, the smaller details. I've seen some teachers insist on you using a larger brush so that you master your technique, but this will naturally come in time. So you use what you're comfortable with because you're going to eventually get it anyway. The angles on this one are a bit difficult, so make sure you are constantly looking at your reference photo and looking at it as abstract shapes. We tend to look at a beak and think we know what one looks like and our brain takes over and we kind of fill in the pieces and it doesn't always end up looking right. If it's easier for you, just try looking at like a one or two inch square at a time and work on that until it's done and then move on. I'm going to fill in the bird's body and uh, around the face with a base layer, which is a mix of primary yellow and cadmium orange hue. I don't completely mix the colors together, so the varying shades of each brush stroke still show. It'll add extra detail without actually adding extra detail. I'm using a rake brush to do most of the feathers on this one. Um, a rake brush is like the fork version of a brush. The tips have separations that when used correctly create several very thin lines. I use the rake brush pretty well every time I do fur or feathers. You can see I keep rotating the brush to get varying brush strokes so that it doesn't turn out looking too unified or uniform and unnatural. Don't go over one area too much because we don't want to blend the colors together too much. We want to keep those varying shades within our brush strokes. I'm going to use a one liner brush to go over some of the small details in the face and then I'm going to also use it to uh, fill in the lines on the wing to draw the feathers. I could have actually waited on this step as I go the color I go over it with is pretty opaque so I end up losing a lot of those lines anyway. Uh, the colors I used were thalo blue, white, and black. Putting the white and black into it kind of gives it more of a grayish tone, dulling it down a little bit. It makes it look a bit more natural, which is kind of closer to the color of the, the reference photo. If you're ever looking for good reference photos, I recommend either Pixabay or Onsplash. They have a ton of royalty-free photos that you can use for reference. I got this particular photo from Onsplash, and I will link that in the description. Now is when I'm going to go ahead and go in with that mixture of phthalo blue, white, and black. Very little black, just a touch to gray it up a bit. Be careful because the black will quickly take over. Start small and only add if needed. I'm going to do just a solid base layer with this color and I'm using just a cheap filbert brush and you can see that the lines almost disappear. I can barely see them. So if I had to do this again, I would wait to do the feather lines until after the base layer so that they would not be so difficult to see. Once I get the base coat established, I'm going to use a small rake brush, mostly because it was just what was right by me. I'm going to use it more like a filbert. I'm making sure that I have smooth, solid lines around the bird. Um, if you have more paint on your rake brush, it will more, work more like a standard filbert. 
This will finish off the base coat for the body of the bird. So I'm going to start blocking in the dark feathers around the beak. You have to watch your values here so that the beak doesn't disappear into the bird. For this dark area, I did a base coat of black. You'll often hear that black is bad, but I use it all the time. I just mix other colors with it or go on top of it with another color. That way it doesn't look too flat. Be sure your yellow is completely dry before adding the black here. Yellow and black make some weird, ugly, greenish color. I'm not sure there's a name for it, but it is not pretty. I'm just making a, a base coat for the uh, of dark for the feathers, the details of the feathers, so that they'll show up on top. Um, you always want your base coat to be a bit darker than your goal color, as the highlights will lighten it up quite a bit. Once I get that dark base coat down, I'm going to start working on the detail of the head of the bird, still using a one-liner brush to refine those details. Then I'm going to create a transition from the black to thalo green and then to the thalo blue. Then I'm going to refine the eye some more. It's at a weird angle, so make sure that you're looking at it as abstract shapes. Because um, if I had painted it what I would think it would look like, it wouldn't have turned out like this. At this point, I'm going to start amping up the contrast by adding highlights to the yellow portion of the bird by adding just a little bit of white to our earlier mixture of primary yellow and cadmium orange hue. Uh, a bit less orange this time. Don't go too bright as we, we want to be able to brighten up more as needed. And we're going to on the left side of the bird. Uh, we're going to amp up the lighting quite a bit on that side. I'm still rotating the rake brush back and forth so that the highlights don't turn out too uniform. When you twist the rake brush on its side, it works more closely to that of a liner brush, and you can use that to break up any areas that begin to look too uniform. And you see I go back in with a liner brush to help with this too. I also added just a bit more white to my paint. Uh, not too much, just enough to make it just a little bit lighter than the previous highlights. And then I'm going to do the same on the head. I'm just using that rake brush with the thalo blue and just a bit of the transparent mixing white. I'm going to start creating a lighter on the left to a darker on the right transition to amp up the color just a bit before I start adding the highlight on the top left. And you can see when I end up going just a little too high uh, with the paint, I end up using a wet brush, kind of like an eraser, to take off the paint just above the he bird's head. Now I'm going to start creating the feathers on the lower body of the bird. Um, using a lighter version of the thalo blue, white, and just a touch of black with a little more white this time. These are different than the other feathers, so watch a reference photo so you can see where it switches up. I'm yet again using the rake brush. You can probably tell at this point that the rake brush is like one of my favorites. I have backups for my rake brush and my liner brushes at all times, just to be sure I never go without. I go with a filbert rake brush instead of the flat rake brush. It leaves less obvious start and stop points than the flat does. Um, so the filbert works out better to look more natural. And once I finish with those, I'm going to glaze gray over the area around the eyes so that you're, you're going to be able to see the white for the feathers that I'm going to add there. But I do a glaze, like I water it down so that it just kind of creates like a shadow rather than an opaque gray so that it'll look more like the shadow for the white feathers that I'm going to put on pop top. But you want a darker base so that your lighter will show. Then I'm going to go through and add the little black feathers that line the eyes. Watch a reference photo for the directions on these. They're weird little guys. The little white feathers that I put here are not actually white. They are a combination of Payne's gray and white. I really go with straight white because it just stands out way too much. I'm going to use a combination of this and black to create the little tiny lines of feathers around the face. And it, it took me a while to do the small section around the face to create the tiny wisps of feathers so they looked right. It's not a very big section. You wouldn't think that it would take a long time, but it really did just because it was so tiny and weird. <laughs> I continue to refine the eyes as I'm working around them. So you'll see me work near 
the eyes a little bit and then work on the eyes a little bit. Um, I just keep kind of going back and forth. And that left eye drove me crazy all the way up until I was done. Sat back and looked at the piece. Now I, I love this piece. It's one of my favorites. It's hanging in my living room. But trust the process. Paint the abstract shapes that you see. Because I, I, I kept thinking that it wasn't right. But it, it turned out looking nice in the end. Don't let this video fool you. It is sped up quite a bit. Uh, you watch these videos online thinking that, you know, you can rush out a painting in a half an hour or a couple hours. The more time you look put into it, the better it's going to look. And sometimes it just takes a while. I have this video sped up by like eight times. I think I have about seven hours worth of footage. And, and I cut out a lot of the repetitive portions, color mixing, dry times, and things like that. But the more you practice, the faster you will get. And there's no need to rush a painting, um, but it will take time to make anything fairly realistic. Now I'm going to start darkening around the nostrils, creating shadow and uh, base layers to define the lighter feathers there. We will want it just a little bit lighter than the face feather so that it appears just a little bit closer. So very little of the paint's gray in this area. The feathers in this area are very small. So the shorter the feather, the smaller the brush strokes. So watch the length and direction of those strokes. And I'm only using my one liner brush to do the small feathers in this area. I don't feel like the rake brush would work very well here. You can see a couple of times I made my feathers just a little bit too long and I end up having to go in with either a wet brush to erase it or a paper towel to dab it a bit to make it look right. Once I get that all in place, I'm just going to use the Payne's Gray to highlight over the black in the area around the beak. And I'm just going to use that as the highlights there to create the details in that area. I'm going back in with just a bit of a lighter version of the yellow mixture. Um, I, I'm not using any of the orange at this point. I'm trying to create more depth without going too bright. And I'm back to the rake, rake brush for this to amp up the contrast, but I'm not going too bright as I still want the brightest point to be on the left. And I'm still going to continue to keep rotating that brush as I go so that I don't continue to get the same stroke over and over again. You don't want it to look too uniform. You want to vary it up. And I'm just going to keep going back and forth to amp up the shadow and light. Um, we've got a pretty solid base layer. So at this point, I'm pretty much just amping up lighting and contrast and refining things as I go. And once I get to this point, I generally start hopping all over the place, depending on what catches my eye at the time. And I keep going back to that left eye. That left eye just drives me nuts right up till the end. Now I'm going to take a rake brush and I'm going to start using transparent mixing white to glaze a highlight across the head. Um, I'm going to take and make a line at the top and with a rake, the rake brush and I'm just going to use the small clean mop brush to like brush it forward following the direction of the feathers and blend it across the head to create a gradient of bright to dark starting the bright to the left and, and darker towards the right. And I'm going to do a couple of layers to accomplish this to make it look like a natural gradient so it looks like the lighting is coming from the left. With the side of the head, I'm going to follow the feathers with the rake brush um, to increase the highlight there. And this time I'm using very little yellow. I want it to be very bright. So I'm using mostly titanium white in that mixture. And I want it to be very bright on that side. I want it to like gradually darken as it goes over to the right. And I'm going to add some of those brighter feathers down the front of the bird as well because it would get some of that highlight in that area as well. I'm yet again going to amp up the contrast and refine around the beak some more. At this point, I'm really just kind of being nitpicky and I'm not really sure it made a big difference in the end. But, yeah, I mean, I guess you don't know until you do it. But I like it, so, I mean, no complaints. I guess it doesn't matter. 
Um, once I finish with that, I'm going to refine the body feathers and start working on highlighting some of those areas more. Um, I'm going to highlight the areas that would be within the light more than the others. At this point, it really is just a consistent back and forth of amping up the light and shadow until I get to a point where I feel like it looks natural. I prefer the gradual build of contrast so that I feel like I have a better idea of where my values are as I go. Your values are one of the most important things that will make the biggest difference in your art. Some fear going too bright or too dark, but this gradual build really eliminates that fear and I believe it makes it look better in the end. If you have trouble with your values, I recommend switching your reference photo to black and white. This will make it easier to judge your values. And you can do that in Photoshop and a lot of uh, phones have the ability to switch your, your photos to black and white. And this way you have a better judge of where you're at with that. To increase the highlight in the areas that I'm adding a lighter, area, lighter paint, I, I'm just adding a bit more white to make it lighter. Every time I want to add a little lighter, want it to be a little lighter, I add just a little bit more. And when I want to add more shadow, I'm going to, at this point, I'm just going to glaze Thalo Blue. And glazing is a watered down paint so that it is a transparent layer. So it will darken it up, but we will still be able to see the details that we already put down. It makes it a very quick and easy way to add shadows. Every once in a while you'll see me spray something on the canvas. This is a fine mist sprayer. I use this to keep the paint wet while working on certain areas. Just any spray bottle will not work the same. It has to be a fine mist sprayer or you could end up with big like water droplets that, that could mess up the paint on your canvas. You'll end up with like paint streaking down and all sorts of crazy stuff that you won't want. And right here I'm doing the glazing for the shadow on the back of the bird where where the the shadow would be the darkest. And although I'm using the rake brush for this area, I'm using it more like a filbert than like a rake brush. And I spend a great deal of time going back and forth, adding light and shadow until I get the results that I want. I'm trying to create a nice fade from the light to the dark. Because I'm just continuing to do the same thing over and over again, I'm going to go ahead and speed this up a little bit so that it goes a little bit quicker. I'm just going to continue amping up the lights and the darks. Once I get them looking good, I'm going to take transparent mixing white on the outside of the left wing and the inside of the right wing to highlight it even more where the light would hit it the most. You can see the transparent mixing white there and there. And then I'm shading some more with the glaze of the phthalo blue. And that pretty well wraps this up. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, like and subscribe to see more.